So it's that episode where we just tie all of this together. You know, the last four weeks we've been speaking about love and then how do I know the quality you look for in a man, in a woman, just ensuring you get your right partner. And I believe that if you listen and do those things, your life will be transformed. You can get those videos underneath this video and it will change your life amazingly. Today, I want to talk about an important topic. How much is enough? You know, I'm walking on the road. I see guys talk to me uh, in Tete a Tete after preaching and they're asking, how much money is enough? One guy put it where I love. He said, love is not a problem. Money is the problem. If I get money today, love is going to follow. But the question is, how much money do you need? to get married. I'll be right back. All right, so the question before me is very interesting and highly practical. How much is enough? You know, how much money do you have to have before you make that decision to walk down the aisle with your girl, with your lady, with the love of your life? How much really is enough? And I don't know how to answer that question without saying that there is no amount of money that is enough really. Especially if you're staying in a country like Nigeria or wherever you stay in the world. Economy happens, people lose their job, economic depression, war happens, things change. How much really is enough? The person asking me want to know from the pages of scriptures. What does the Bible say even about this? I was in Lagos recently and they were having this talk and then the guy said, listen, listen, uh, ladies are ready when we have money. Let's go and make money first and then we'll go and get our ladies. But you know, there's also that backside of that argument. There's also the other side of the argument, meaning that when you get money and get so much money, you also stop trusting because you believe they are in your life in order to get your money. So basically, you need to find that balance to understand that you have to take money out of the equation if you are going to find true love. Money is important because it runs romance, but money is not the defining factor when it comes to love or romance. It fails, it makes it get better. Uh, you can't think of fueling a car if you first of all don't buy a car. Do you understand that? So you first must have a car, then what you fuel it with is what makes it work. Do you understand that? So you first of all have to have love, and then what fuels your love is now money. I need to say right here that when I was planning to get married, I, I, money was not a factor. I didn't ask myself how much I had in the account because I really didn't have much in the account. It wasn't so much about the money I had. It was so much about the person I wanted to do life with. Do you understand? So you need to come to that conclusion. You need to come to that part of your life to be able to say to yourself, oh, really, money is not the factor. But somebody said to me, when I said that argument, he said, sir, you got married about a decade ago. Uh, the world has really changed. If I'm getting married now, would money be a factor? My answer would still be no. It wouldn't be a factor. Um, so, but, but to the question, is money important? in marriage in before you get married uh, i'm not talking about in marriage because in marriage yes just like as a personal person an individual you're single you still need money to run things so of course you will still need money to run your marriage to run your home to run your family but does he have to decide the answer will be yes and no from scriptures no because in scriptures there is no verse that is directly related to money that directly connects money and marriage together there is no verse in scripture sir, that directly connects money and marriage together. So you can't claim or say that God said you have to have money before you get married. You can't, you can't make that statement. You know, there's a lot of things we say and a lot of noise sir, that makes it look scriptural. But I tell people that, listen, God is the founder of marriage. God is the one who started it. And therefore, we must go to God to understand what is his idea about marriage. I'm not giving you something you may work out. I'm telling you this is what the Bible says. Uh, this is what the scripture says. And if you follow the foundations uh, and the precept of scriptures, then we would also find the joy even in marriage. In fact, let me say this to you. In Jewish tradition, the rabbis encourage early marriage. The rabbis encourage early marriage, believing that it is important that you marry early in order to fulfill the mandate of God. Genesis chapter 1 verse 28, the mandate of God's humanity was to go multiply, be fruitful, multiply, and then replenish the house. So the rabbi believed that when you get married early, you are able to fulfill that injunction early. You are able to fulfill it early. The age of marriage was 18. And anyone that is not married above the age when above the age of 25, you are not married, is believed to be cursed. In fact, in old times, above the age of 20, you are not married, you are believed to be under a curse. <laughs> uh, even today, most people, over 50% of, of Jewish people, get married before the age of 25. They do. And, and that's basic. 
but you should understand also that that culture encourages them to get married early but that culture also encourages them to also have a skill quite early therefore a jewish boy a jewish boy will start learning a trade from the age of 12 will start learning a trade so you are a skillful person so the question should not necessarily be how much money you have the question should be how much skill that can be translated to money do you have how much skill that is in demand do you have therefore if you have a skill that is in demand then money will follow money will come by consistency by deliberateness money will come but first of all do you have a skill listen to this scripture did not emphasize and, and we have come to a generation and a time where in earthly wisdom we begin to emphasize what the scripture does not emphasize as it concerns marriage the scripture does not emphasize money when it comes to making decision of who to marry or when it even makes that comes to that decision of getting married what the scripture emphasizes is number one love do you love that person scripture emphasizes that number two wisdom proverbs says that wisdom a house is built you can't build anything if you don't have practical wisdom which is wisdom is the practical application of knowledge it's not the ability to be able to define temperance in marriage <laughs> it's the ability to live temperance it's not the ability to define what meekness is it is that ability to actually live a make life that's it number three the bible also talks about commitment which you also saw in the life of ruth she was committed to that family she got married to that family and she was committed and that thing is acceptance acceptance deborah chose to follow abraham's servant there, there was acceptance those are the things you will find marriage should not be forced marriage should be a choice you should accept it number five faithfulness marriage is not for people who are disloyal Therefore, the marriage bed must be undefiled. The, the, the writer of Proverbs says, Be satisfied with your own sister, meaning that you should only live and dwell and be satisfied with, the, with having sex with your own woman alone, not go around everywhere. That's faithfulness. Faithfulness. So, another thing you have is encouragement. You see, in scriptures, I believe a verse of scripture that will help us uh, is Proverbs 24 and verses 3 to 4. The Bible says, by wisdom a house is built, and through understanding it is established. True knowledge is rooms are filled with rare and beautiful treasures. By wisdom a house is built. It didn't say by money. It said, true understanding it is established. And true knowledge is rooms are filled with rare and beautiful treasures. You're going to need things in marriage. You are going to need to fill up your house. You're going to need to fill up that bedroom, that sitting room. Bible says it is true knowledge that its rooms are filled. You see, money wasn't mentioned. But yes, you would need money. You would need money. Bible made it clear. Matthew 19, 4 to 6, Genesis chapter 2, and then verse 24. The Bible says, For this reason, a man should leave his father's father and mother and then be clean to his wife. To live to where? <laughs> you must live to a house you must live to a place of abode you must join yourself to your wife if there's a place of abode and place of abode are things that are built by money the, if either you are renting it you are scotting or you both but all of these things most times has to do with exchange of money there is actually a truth in scriptures bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and then verse 12 bible says wisdom is a defense as money is also a defense. He said, but the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom gives life to those that have it. But listen, we cannot come, we cannot um, cannot mistake the truth. We cannot mistake that truth that wisdom and money are referred to as defense in scriptures. Money is a defense. So money will make your life better. It will help you have vineyards. All true scriptures, the Bible speaks of men providing for their family. In fact, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8, the Bible says, Anyone who does not provide for their relative and especially for their own household has denied the faith and they are worse than infidel. Listen, it tells you again that it is important. It is important that you have money. But the question is, how much money is enough? According to life, according to scriptures, there's no enough money. There's no, there's no, I can't give you like how much except we want to start talking about economic indices of the city or the place where you are staying with and all of that but listen life throws men coughs therefore you cannot decide that uh this is what you're going to do based on how much you have in your account um you you your, a business can go wrong and, and 
Poor people can surge up in life. Do you understand? God can raise people. In fact, his business is in raising people from the merry clay and making them see to the princes of this world. So you cannot zero your life or, or believe that when you get a certain amount of money because inflation increases with it, then you will be able to make certain decisions. Proverbs 23 to 5, Bible says, Cast but they glance at riches, and they are gone. For they will surely sprout wings and fly off to the sky like an eagle. That makes me remember this story, quite pathetic story. While I was growing up, a fantastic guy worked at that time with one of these um, great companies in Nigeria, people's lab visions to work there. And he, he was the big boy. At that time, I think he was using a Pojo 504 brand new and all of that. And he, he wanted to get married and then he picked the date, he was getting married. Of course, was sighting Medin, he was a big boy by all standards. And I, I, will, I will never forget that. Uh, at the wedding Friday, um, he was dancing very happy, un unknown to him that he was already sacked on Friday from his place of work. And then on Saturday, he did the wedding and in the evening on Saturday, they broke the news to him that he's been sacked. Now, needless to say, the marriage didn't work because traditionally they would say the woman had, has a bad leg, bad man, and all of that, and things never really picked up. I mean, his life just went, I mean, it just went down. And that's basically because money was at the root of even the woman saying yes and no. Listen, life changes. I'm not trying to fix why the thing did not work. I'm not trying to be a blame. I'm just trying to say life happens to people. I mean, there's this viral stories that went viral about fitness experts by the name Bumi George quite recently. I don't know whether you saw that. And she, she was saying she got married to her husband. The man was a pilot and things were working quite good. Things were working very fine for them and he lost his job and for many months they were believing God for another job and things were very bad, they had to downsize, they had to do so many things I mean, and she was saying that God was faithful because she was able to pull through now that's, that, that tells you that challenges happen in life now, I, I, I'm tired of a generation being lied to or, or whatever tells you that you need to have you need to build your relationship on money because if your persuasion is that I'll get into love by money it means that money, you believe money is the most essential part of relationship and that's not true that's the falsehood that's listening to the narration of the devil and narration of the world is money important in, in relationship? yes but is money the foundation of relationship? no, no the answer is no don't get married don't make that decision because of money don't marry someone I mean, people say it, ladies now are looking for guys that are made in another that. but it's getting to its time now that even men want to get married to a lady that is financially rich that's financially okay that's buoyant and you see we're duping each other and then small time we'll start saying that oh i'm sad breakfast oh like i said recently it's better to be sad breakfast in a relationship but you see if they serve you breakfast in marriage your life is almost ruined forever because that one there's no breakfast it's it's it's, it's dinner it's not breakfast, it's dinner. They just serve you dinner because you're going nowhere anymore. And, and your life, except God comes in, there's so much darkness. You know, after eating dinner, you know, it's darkness that comes. You understand what I'm trying to say? So I advise you to be very careful not making money what it's not. All right, so answering that question, what is the wisdom we can gain from the pages of scriptures? Because it's straight out of scriptures, S-O-X, uh, where we tell biblical truth and give scriptural perspective to today's matter and today we're asking how much money do i need to have uh, before i get married or let's ask it properly how important is money before i say i do i'll tell you today the following that's wisdom from scriptures number one cooperation of both partners little is much where love dwells can i say that to someone again little is much where love dwells it is not what you have or don't have it is the cooperation of two persons two are better than one scripture says because they have a greater reward for their labor can two work together except they be agreed in much chapter three and then verse three bible says in exodus chapter four verse nine two are better than one they have a good return for their labor i think i said that before four twelve exercises though one may be overpowered two can defend themselves a cord of three strands is not quickly broken life and marriage is full of ups and downs if you can find a person who is ready to go with you through it all then you are in great complaint things will change things will change i remember let's look at scriptures remember that man by the name of david david was a shepherd boy i mean if you have found a lover while he was just eroding 
taking ships around and all of that. And then he got into a time where he was in trouble and things became very hard because Saul was looking for him and he became a vagabond. I mean, you look at him and say, this guy is going nowhere. But look at him, he became the king. Listen, if you can find someone who can do life with you and go through it all, cooperation of both partners. And that comes with a lot of intimacy, a lot of intimacy, a lot of openness. And that's very key. Don't try and be who you are not. If you are getting into a relationship, don't paint things for that lady. Don't paint for that guy that you don't have. Let her know your reality. If she's ready to stay with it, fine. If she's not, let her go. I mean, you might not win, you might lose someone, but you'll get someone better. And then number two, financial commitment and sacrifice. Don't let anybody fool you. Marriage is a lot of sacrifices. If your marriage is going to work, it's a lot of sacrifice. And you sacrifice is not what you get when you are already in that marriage. You will know somebody who is going to sacrifice for you, even while you are dating. I mean, that's the purpose, that's the essence of dating. How much sacrifice is this person ready to take for me? When you just play with them, there's no money. What did they do? What did they do? Listen to this. Marriage is not about the glees, the pictures you see on social media. There are real things going on behind that camera, real things going on behind the scene. And you must be able to ask yourself, am I ready to do life with this person? A sacrifice must include financial sacrifices. Yes, there might be money, but my money should become our money when there is a generic need. When I have a need, you must be able to say, okay, this is what I can do to support that vision, this is what I can do to support you as you go forward, because we are both in this together. Bible says when two persons come together, two will become one. So oneness is very key and very important. Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25, husband loves your wife, love your wife just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Gave himself up. Gave himself up. Emptied himself for her. And that's what it means. Number three, man, you must have a plan. I'm speaking basically to a man now. There must be a plan to grow financially, to take care of you and take care of that person. Listen, I, I started by one of the things I started while laying foundations about the Hebrew guys. And I said that Hebrew people, they get married quite early. And before the age of 20, 18, 20 is that marriage year, and they just get married and all of that. But understand that they were also they are also equipped with a skill from the age of 12. So man, don't just get married and say, I'm believing God, I have faith, He said it, I said it. He said it, yes, he said it, I believe it. No, no, don't do that. There must be a plan. You must have a skill. There must be a plan to grow up, a vision to live by. Bible says in 29, 18, that without the vision, people perish. The vision is the hope for your future. If you don't have a vision, there is nothing that will be translated tomorrow. So you must have a good vision for your life. A man must be a person of vision. Young men will dream. Young men, one of the qualities in the era of the Holy Spirit coming is that our young men will have visions. They must have, they must see visions. You must have a vision, have a smart plan and stick to it. How much money are you going to earn in the next one year? Is there a plan to grow up? Yes, she can live with you today, probably at a place that's not so good, suburb, but there must be a plan to move on to urban centers. Why? Because you also have a plan to progressively increase. I'm not asking you, my son, who will give you pressure, but without being pressured, you must put pressure upon your skill, put pressure upon your plan, get better so that things work out for you. Those are things that scripture make clear for us. There must be a clear vision that you are living by. Don't ask them to have faith uh, when there is nothing to believe in. I see a lot of people saying that, you know what, our, our fathers, when they see pastors and they say, you know, uh, those days are their way gone. There are no ladies to sacrifice anymore. They don't understand that the ladies then sacrificed uh, because they had vision and they submitted to a vision. If you don't have a vision, there is nothing that lady is going to submit to. You must be able to paint a clear vision. I'm not asking you to go and, you know many times you go and show forth your clothes, show forth how you smell, show forth your achievements, your attainment. Now, if the ladies buy into that achievement, buy into that money, that smell, that aura, that fragrance, and eventually you can't afford those things anymore, then there's no love anymore. But if that person buys in into you, into the vision of God for your life, into your purpose, into your destiny, that's never going to change. 
and that's what you should paint uh, that's what you go around with that's what you should sell i went to my wife for getting married traveled to Ibadan. and she was staying there then and i said i'm coming to share my vision with you and that's what i did for about one and a half hours and i took questions afterwards well like an interview i mean after that vision i painted i said do you have any question i want to i want to ask you, you can ask me those questions now and i will answer and it that was about three hour session just trying to convince her not because by what i look like what i have what i hold no just vision and that's very important number four you must have a work listen we cannot continually tell ladies to marry people and not think about money not think about work you must have a work i'm not saying be employed somewhere but you must have a skill there must be a work you're doing there must something you do efficient chapter four and i believe verse 28 paul said let him that steal let him steal no more but let him work with his own hands there must be something you are doing Hello, you may not be earning so much with what you're doing, but we know with a little bit of improvisation, better use of opportunities, uh, you increasing your knowledge base, your, your network, uh, you'll be able to get better. But what are you doing? What is your work? Uh, what are you doing? God first gave Adam a garden to tend before he gave him a wife. Uh, your work must come before marriage. No, you may not be a CEO, but you must be doing something. Number five, I think is essential. I'm trying to answer that question. Uh, how much money do I need to have? And I'm saying no, it's not about money, it's about the wisdom that the Bible teaches. And I'm trying to break it down. The scripture teaches certain wisdom. And I said, number one, cooperation of both partners. Number two, financial commitment and sacrifices. Number three, you must have a plan. That's wisdom from scriptures. Number four, you must have a work. Jesus was called Jesus the carpenter, the son of Joseph the carpenter. Some people even refer to Jesus as the carpenter. I mean, we have ministries named carpenter, meaning the carpenter's church, the carpenter's ministry. That tells you that Jesus had a skill. He was in the marketplace. What are you doing? Number five, wisdom from scriptures is that you should have a house. It's a basic requirement. I mean, that depends on your culture. If you are not born in India where people live in family houses, if you are a Nigerian for instance, or if you are an American for instance, then you must have a house. There must be an abode. When you get married, where are you getting married to into? Where are you taking the lady into? Uh, that, that, that reminds me again of, of this pathetic story. You know, as pastors, we hear a lot of things. And when we talk like this, it's because of what we've had. And I remember this young lady was talking to me and she was saying that um, I got married to this man and I asked, how, I mean, I asked him where we're going to stay because he was, he was squatting with somebody and I asked, I said, where are we going to stay? And he said, no, you don't you understand. I have, I have it said that I've already paid and that we're going to move if just before marriage. And the lady kept asking, have you moved? Have we moved? Are we supposed to buy some things? Am I supposed to be getting some things? Hey, I have this said to them and all of that and they got married at their honeymoon at, at the camp and then they, they left the place and the lady was asking okay so where are we going where's the house and then he said you know some things happen and all of that we're just going to go and scott with the married woman for a while i feel that that i mean the marriage ran into a lot of itches a lot of problems why because there was no house and i think that we need to be very sincere transparent and open with whoever we are dealing with it's very key it's very important i tell folks if you're living in lagos if you cannot afford a house in, in, in Lekki, you can't afford a house in ikeja you can't afford a house in Suleri. you may be able to afford one in Jushaga, Ekwe. if you can't afford it and afford one in the Kurudu, or ju just afford it please uh, let the person know this is where we're starting from it's called here we start if he's ready to do that with you then it's fine isaiah 32 verse 18 the bible says, my people will live in peaceful dwelling places in secure homes in undisturbed places of rest my people will live in peaceful dwelling places so it's important to god that you have a place he said in secure homes in undisturbed places of rest get a dwelling place and that will take money yes yes that will take money and then number six you need to have the right woman the right woman for mr charles is not the right woman for mr festus 
you must have the right woman. Genesis chapter 2 verse 18, the Bible made it quite clear that women are not generic, meaning they are not for everyone. Every woman you see is not for you. Listen, you might not like the attitude, you might not like her composure, you might not like the way she carries herself back, but that's what somebody else is looking for. Bible says in 2.18 Genesis, he said, I will, he said, I will make him an helper suitable for him. Therefore, whoever is suitable for her might not be suitable for you. Uh, you, because you are an individual, God will specifically wire someone and send that person to you. Someone who supplies you strength when you are weak, someone who, who, who helps you in your weakness, someone who covers you, someone who is there for you. You might be very bad in financial management, God will send somebody to you who will be very skillful in managing your finances, your emotional life, it will be there. That person will be a, will be a force of stability, will give you confidence, tell you you can do it, a proper manager. God is going to send it your way. So it's not send that your way, and that's very key. Bible says in Proverbs 14 and verse 1: the wise woman builds a house, but with her own house, the foolish one tears them down. Tears them down. I mean, we've got to that time where we need to start telling ourselves sincere truth. Whatever works in your relationship, let it stay in your relationship. I, I mean, your relationship is not supposed to be a social media affair. It is your husband, not our husband. It is your fiance, not our fiance. We should stop this thing where we talk and we compare notes because no two homes are ever the same because the characters are not the same. What works for you may not work for somebody else. So listen, there are principles we should learn, but because someone did or does something doesn't mean you also should continue in that line. And finally, you must have faith in God. Especially if you are living in a, a country like Nigeria, you must have faith in God. Your salary will not be enough. What you earn might not be enough. You need to believe God that He supplies your needs. You need to believe God for multiple streams of income. You need to believe God for creative ideas. You need to believe God for opportunities. You need to believe God in all things. Bible says in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 4, the Bible says, For every house is built by someone, but that he that builds all things, including your finances, is God. Listen, many of us have faith even for our church many of us are faith for healing many of us are faith uh, even for uh for our health it is time for us to develop faith for our finances uh, i mean i taught some series about that i've got idea about finances uh, solomon's wealth code you might need to watch that video it's on my youtube page and it's also on my telegram page you want to watch that uh, i i broke the solomon wealth code one of the wealthiest persons that ever lived uh, and I broke it down. What was his income? How did he get into wealth? How did he have what he had? And that will help you as a man. Remember that unless the Lord builds a house, the labor in vain that builds it. Your relationship is God's idea. It must be God's idea. It must be built in tenants, in building line, even with God's principles and tenants. And that's very important. And that's very key. How much money do you need? I tell you zero level. <laughs> what do you need? A woman who is compassionate, you need a woman who is strong, you need a woman who is cooperative, you need a woman who is ready to go with you. You need the right woman. What else do you need? You need that basic of life. You need to have shelter. That's a basic necessity. Money will get that for you. What else do you need? How much is enough? You need to have a skill. You must have a plan. You must have a work and you must have a vision. Is that vision you sell to somebody to follow you and you must therefore get someone who is ready to who understands that relationship and marriage. It's about sacrifice. It's about sacrifice. It's about sacrifice. I can't emphasize that enough. It's about sacrifice uh, because you are small today, but with God, you'll be great tomorrow. And I have an amen. You'll be great tomorrow. With God, you'll be great tomorrow. Greater is in your tomorrow. Bible says the part of the just is as a shining light. It shine more and more even unto the perfect day. I believe this has helped you. I believe this has helped you. Don't forget before you go, subscribe to this channel. Drop a comment. I like to hear what you think about this. Drop a comment. Uh, uh, subscribe. Share this with someone. Let them know that liberty comes when we follow the dictate of God. Because the ways of God is the way of the righteous. And God's principle for our life to blossom is that we follow his principles. And his principle is not money based. His principle is God and righteousness based. Because by righteousness, a nation is exalted. God will exalt you as you begin to practice and live his principles even in the world. The Lord keep you. The Lord bless you. Thank you for watching. Cheers.